you never want to hear of one of your own being gone. We'll tell you how a junior firefighter here in Lincoln County will be remembered after he died in a motorcycle crash. Firefighters in Mercer County are investigating after crews pulled two bodies from a burning building. A community comes together to show support for those who lost their lives in the Nepal earthquake. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 11. Friends say he will be dearly missed. Thanks for staying up with us. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Tonight, friends of a teenager killed in a crash in Casey County are remembering him. 17-year-old Taylor Woods died Friday while riding his motorcycle. The teenager volunteered as a junior firefighter in Lincoln County. WKYT Sam Smith is talking to those who worked with him. He has our top story at 11. I follow him on Facebook and Instagram. He loved riding. I seen that right off the bat. Reminds me a lot of myself. Lieutenant Joe Hoskins is right. It's easy to see Taylor Woods' love for bikes. Hoskins says he was also a junior firefighter in Lincoln County, joining up here at the age of 15. Uh, everything we ever asked him to do, he was on top of it. He was, he was a good kid. State police say Woods was killed in a crash on Friday in Casey County. They say he was hit head on by a car that crossed the center line. They say the 17 year old was on his motorcycle. You never want to hear of one of your own being gone. Hoskins says even though Woods was a junior firefighter, he's part of the fraternity. It doesn't matter if you was here 30 years ago and retired or you just come on yesterday. You're to us, you're a brother, you're part of a family. And they'll rely on one another to get through this. Brotherhood of fire departments is stronger than any bond I've ever seen in my life. Junior firefighters learn what it takes to fight fires without actually doing it. They become full-fledged firefighters at the age of 18. Sadly, Woods won't get that chance. In Lincoln County, Sam Smith, WKYT. Woods' visitation is Tuesday in Casey County. The Lincoln County Fire Department plans to have a fire engine there to pay their respects. A fire investigation in Mercer County is now a death investigation. Firefighters were out battling flames on Danville Road last night. Crews pulled two bodies from the former auto sales shop. When firefighters arrived, they say they found a meth lab inside the building. Investigators are still trying to figure out what caused the fire. The names of the victims have not been released. Firefighters in Lexington were busy investigating a fire on Eureka Springs Drive today. We're told the building that caught fire was an old, vacant one. The wind was cause for concern for crews out on the scene. They were worried gusts would spread or reignite the fire. Right now, they're not sure what started it. It's a vacant building, so theoretically nobody should be in it. There, you know, there shouldn't be any reason for it to ignite. So the fire, like I said, the fire investigator's here. He'll be taking a look at it and seeing if he can make a determination. The fire chief says the building is unlivable at this time. We saw plenty of sunshine today, and what a welcome sight after Saturday's storm. Some cooler than normal temperatures are still lingering, though. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell has a first look at the forecast. Yeah, we're already dropping into the 40s here in Lexington, and before it's all said and done, we likely end up in the low and mid 30s during the overnight. That means maybe some of us wake up to at least a few areas of patchy frost tomorrow morning. 48 here in Lexington, as I mentioned, 48 degrees in Richmond, and we've got 48 in Danville. So we're all over the place there with those mid and upper 40s with a few locations also coming in right around 50 degrees. So again, the chill filtering in. Here's Defender scanning the skies across northern Kentucky at the moment, and you're not going to find anything. We won't find anything tonight. We won't find anything tomorrow. But once we cross over into Wednesday, Thursday, there might actually be a few showers that will creep into the area. Again, very, very light showers. Not a big deal. Out the door in the mornings, we plan your Monday. 34 degrees. That has a little bite to it when you walk out. We go into lunchtime. We're talking about a mix of sun and clouds, temperature around 54, and then up to uh, the uh, low 60s. 70 popping in there for some reason, but low 60s likely coming your way. We'll take a closer look coming up. Tonight, we're learning at least two tornadoes touched down in Kentucky yesterday. The National Weather Service in Louisville confirms an EF1 tornado hit Adair County, an EF2 hit Edmondson County. 
Crews were out surveying the damage today. They say several barns, outbuildings, even a silo suffered major damage. And in Whitley County, the storms heavily damaged one home. A mother went to Walmart while her children were asleep at home with their grandfather. That's when a tree took down power lines and a utility pole and part of their trailer. Friends helped them replace the pole and they're hoping to restore power by tomorrow night. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Many of you have been sending us your photos of this weekend's storm damage. Ashley Short from Rock Castle County sent us video of hail falling in her front lawn. Most hailstones we saw in your viewer pics were about two inches in diameter, just slightly smaller than a tennis ball. And if you want to send us videos and photos of storms, just go to our Facebook page where you can post them to our wall or send them in a message. The death toll in Nepal continues to rise. Crews now estimate more than 2,500 died in Saturday's earthquake. And another 61 people outside of Nepal in surrounding countries died in the disaster. The 7.8 magnitude quake, according to the Nepal Mountaineering Association, triggered an avalanche on Mount Everest. Search and rescue efforts are far from over. For some central Kentucky men and women who grew up in Nepal, the devastation from this weekend's earthquake is tough to bear. Many are now trying to help friends and family back home. Tonight, the Kentucky Nepali Society put together a vigil. WKYT's Jordan Vilines attended. Flames flickering under the setting sun lit up the letters spelling out the exact reason why folks gathered in Lexington's Triangle Park on Sunday evening. We're not in the country. In Nepal right now, we are coming together to support. Many who attended the vigil even told us they have family, friends back home in Nepal. It's very painful and missing my, especially my daughter, you know, my families are okay, my daughter is okay, my friends are okay, but the whole Nepal is not okay right now. A country more than 2,500 people have lost their lives. Rocked by the recent earthquakes. The national monuments, the temples and structures that that have stood there for more than about four or five hundred years, they are not in existence anymore, and that saddens my heart. Everywhere you looked at the vigil, signs of solidarity could be seen. The candles and the prey, and you know, that's all we can do, I guess. A true showing of support to the folks who are suffering thousands of miles away. That's why we are gathered here to remember all those people who lost lives, pray. And uh, to show our solidarity, and uh, we would like to ignite hope to the people back home. In the difficult days that lay ahead, the organizer of this vigil says they'll find strength and solace by leaning on one another and certainly not giving up hope for their loved ones back home. In Lexington, Jordan Valines, WKYT. Organizers with the Kentucky Nepali Society are asking the public to donate to the Red Cross to help relief efforts in Nepal. You can find a link to the organization on our website. We're tracking the investigation into a fiery crash in Lexington. Police say a woman was driving down Lakeshore Drive around 2 this morning when she hit two parked cars, causing all three to burst into flames. One of our viewers sent in this eyewitness video of the crash. We also got pictures from a viewer near the scene. Police tell us the driver wasn't injured and they don't believe alcohol was a factor. Lexington police are looking for several armed men after two overnight robberies. The first happened around 10.30 last night on Codell Drive. Police say a man was sitting in his car when three men, each armed with a gun, walked up to him and stole his wallet and car. Then just after 4 a.m., a few blocks down from the first robbery, police tell us two other men were sitting in their car when someone armed with a gun threatened them and stole their wallets and car. Police have not said if the two robberies are connected. The U.S. Supreme Court is set to consider one of the biggest civil rights issues facing the country this week. Tuesday, the justices will begin hearing a case that could decide the future of same-sex marriage. Bureau Chief Jacqueline Pauly Castro reports from Washington. The Supreme Court will hear arguments involving same-sex marriage bans from four states, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Michigan. Supporters and protesters from across the country are traveling to Washington ahead of the hearing. Passions are running high as the Supreme Court takes up the issue of marriage equality. The final decision will be named after the Ohio lawsuit, the first to reach the justices, Obergefell versus Hodges. Jim Obergefell wants his legal Maryland marriage to be recognized on his husband's Ohio death certificate. It's my way to live up to the promises I made to him over time. 
And you know, when we said I do, there are promises that are built into that. In Kentucky, Greg Burke and Michael DeLeon are asking for their legal Canadian marriage recognized and for both men to be the legal parents of their two adopted children. You know, it's the Supreme Court, so they can. You know, they can do what they want. Last year, in a tear filled announcement, Kentucky's attorney general said he wouldn't defend the state's ban on gay marriage. Kentucky hired outside counsel to argue before the Supreme Court. So I had to make a decision I could be proud of. For me now? And for my daughter's judgment in the future. In Tennessee, Valeria Tanko and Sophie Jesty have a child together and want recognition of their legal New York wedding. One of the main reasons, other than the legal recognition of our own family, was to help those people that don't have the ability to represent themselves. And in Michigan, April DeBoer and Jane Rouse are fighting against Michigan's ban on adoptions by same sex couples. They want to jointly adopt the three children they're raising together. This case is about the protection of our children. It is not about the individuals. It's not about her and our, my relationship. This is about ensuring that our children will remain together no matter what happens to her and I. The Supreme Court will first consider whether states have the obligation to perform same sex marriages. Then the court will hear arguments as to whether states are obligated to recognize same sex marriages performed in other states. A decision can be handed down at any time after the hearing, but is expected at the end of the court's term in June or early July. Reporting at the Supreme Court, I'm Jacqueline Paula Castro. Several Kentucky couples will be in Washington, D.C. this week to see what happens. A northern Kentucky man is facing charges tonight of having child pornography. Police arrested 31 year old Richard Ray Washington last week in Covington. Investigators say they found computers and other equipment in his home that he used to distribute images and video of children. He faces one to five years in prison for each of his 20 counts. A massive marijuana operation landed two people behind bars in eastern Kentucky. The Martin County Sheriff says he smelled marijuana while driving by a home on Rock House Road. Deputies found about 150 marijuana plants growing in a trailer converted into a greenhouse. Marty Bollett Jr. and Pamela Blevins now face charges of trafficking and cultivating marijuana. We've got a lot worse things, heroin and meth, but marijuana is illegal, and as long as it's illegal, we have to, uh, we have to act upon it. The sheriff says Mollett and Blevins lived in an apartment above a garage next door and that they were able to keep a close eye on the plants with the use of a security system. We have an update to a story we told you about last week. A dog that went missing two years ago in Lexington is back with her family in Utah. Someone found Tilly, a seven-year-old beagle mix, a little more than a week ago wandering the streets. Tilly disappeared in 2013, right before her family moved to Utah. A microchip confirmed her owners. A member of the Lost and Found Pets of Lexington Facebook page volunteered to drive Tilly to her family in Utah. It is a long drive. Was it worth it? It was absolutely worth it. Hi, sweetheart. Hello. Two years. Donors paid for Tilly's trip home.